Hi, Steve here, and welcome to my first video on the Modo 701 particle system. Particle systems are used to create a multitude of effects from explosions and flames to water and fluid flows. This video will concentrate on the basics of getting a particle system up and running. In later sections I will cover the more advanced features and show how to mould particle systems to your specific needs. So let's get started. First you will need to select the setup layout so that you have access to the schematic editor. Select the particles tab to reveal the particle tools. Particle systems consist of two main components. The first is the emitter and the second is the particle simulation itself. The emitter injects particles into the system and the simulation is the engine that manages their evolution over time. To create your first particle system, simply click on one of the emitters. I will use the radial emitter as it is probably the simplest to understand. Notice that Modo has now created two items in the item list, the radial emitter and a particle simulation. Simulations are created automatically if there isn't already one in the scene. To get these items into the schematic, select them and drag them over. We now have a fully functioning particle system. To see what it does, we need to run the simulation. Notice the three green buttons at the bottom. The first hollow button runs the simulation forever at the time selected on the timeline. To prevent overpopulation, particles will be culled when their age exceeds the maximum. The second solid button runs the simulation for the duration of the timeline, then kills all particles and restarts. Let's see what that looks like. First with the hollow button, and then with the solid button. To stop a simulation, simply click the stop button. There is another way to get your items into the schematic, which I think is faster. We can use the add button to add the emitter instead. Select add, particles, simulation, and then radial emitter. As you can see, the emitter and simulation are added to both the schematic and the item list using this method. We can do quite a lot with just a radial emitter. It has a whole bunch of settings for modifying its behaviour and the other emitter types share many of these settings, so it is worth looking at these in some detail. Let's start the simulation. The emission rate controls, well, the rate at which the particles are emitted. Obviously the more particles there are, the slower the simulation will run, but often more particles means better results. So just the emission rate up. You see we get more particles. And if we adjust it down, we see fewer particles. The cone angle is specific to the radial emitter and adjusts its shape from a complete sphere through to a narrow jet. The angle spread allows for some variation in the cone angle. If I increase the cone angle and then increase the spread, you can see that some particles are generated in the region between the dotted and solid circle. The initial velocity sets the speed at which the particles move. So we can have particles emitted travelling very quickly 
or more slowly. The velocity spread adds some randomness to this value. So if you want all your particles to be emitted with the same velocity, you need to set this setting to zero. Notice how the particles are being emitted from the apex of a cone. The start radius converts the cone into a frustum and emits particles from a circle instead. Let me demonstrate. The radius spread adds some randomness As you can see they're now being emitted either side of the circle, not exactly on it. There are two more settings to look at. The emission type controls whether particles are emitted at regular intervals or randomly. Whichever is selected, the emission rate will be the same on average over time. Let's have a look at that. Here we have a radial emitter emitting a very narrow jet with the uniform emission type selected. So particles appear in a regular pattern. If we change it to random then we get a rather lumpier effect. The final setting I'm going to look at is inherit velocity. In MODO the particle system is closely linked to the dynamics and animation system. If an emitter is moving then its velocity can be added to the particles that it emits, which is the correct behaviour at non-relativistic speeds. We can see the results of the two settings in the following examples. First, without inherited velocity. As the particles are emitted, they're left behind as the emitter moves across the scene. Think of smoke or a flame on top of a moving train carriage. In the second example, the particles move straight up from the moving emitter. In this case, think of the smoke or flame inside the train carriage where there's no wind to deflect it. As you can see, even with the simplest of particle systems, the range of effects is quite large. But there's more. In this model, I have linked six radial emitters into the simulation and put them into a group locator. Rotating the whole thing creates a lawn sprinkler or Catherine wheel effect. This example also shows the difference between the two play buttons. If I use the hollow button, then animation time stands still and the jets do not rotate. With the solid button, we get the animation and the desired effect. In the next video, I will look at the other emitter types and the controls for the simulation itself. Thanks for watching.